Welcome back to How to Tie with your guide, Shannon Messer from Tuckasitia Fly Shop. Folks, I apologize about the Facebook Live event. Alexa was playing in the background, and apparently Facebook doesn't like Alexa playing music, and it cut me off. So with that being said, I was going to come to you here with a fly that I have tied for the Norvice Fly Tying Competition. Uh, March Madness and I am competing against a really good fly tire by the name of Michael Thomas and I need you folks to go to the Norvice Facebook page and vote on my fly which I'm going to tie for you here in just a moment but before I get into that there I wanted to give a shout out to a few people I apologize here I should have been a little bit more orderly with this thing obviously Tucka CG Fly Shop Net Fish and Chill Say out a big shout out to our guys out in West Yellowstone, Montana at Big Sky Anglers. Our friends at Sims. Check out these pretty cool hats. We got them without the feather on top that belongs to me. Our friends at Scott Fly Rods. That's been really hot this week. We've sold two of them. And of course, Norvice Fly Tying System. Tie better flies faster. And where's my little buddy at? Ooh, yeah. They don't call me the bear magnet for nothing. Look at here. I even got one in my house and he's called a fish. So there you go. All right. Hope everybody's doing good. I want to tie for you this um, nymph that I actually call the two wire nymph. I chose to tie this pattern or to come up with these colors just to showcase uh, uh, the ability to tie those materials real tightly in there. And the colors I chose were more for contrast, but it looks like it will fish really good, and I'm quite confident it will. So here in my Norvice, I'm going to put in a size 400, a Hannock 400 BL, and it's a size 8. And the reason why it's a size 8 is so it will give me plenty of room to uh, showcase those wraps of wire. And I do have a fauceted tungsten bead on it, slotted. I'm using Vivas Tenno in black. I'm going to get my thread started here uh, on the hook and I just kind of want to jam this bead up in there like so like that and I've not added any wire on this on purpose I want this to be about as flat as I can be in through here and for my tail I want to use some coke de leon which I had some line around here somewhere I can't seem to oh there it is right there it is and I'm going to try to go a little slower on this video to make it last um, a little longer, maybe 10 minutes or so in there. That's what they say the magic window is, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to grab some Coat De Leon right here, some really nice stuff here. Uh, this one actually came from, it's a Whiting um, Farms product, but there's some good ones out there. Uh, hairline that we have in the shop, things like that. Look at my length here. And I started on my side and I let it roll over to the top. Let's kind of get that in there like so and I'm making here with this I want that thread to flatten out for me okay so I'm just gonna let it hang there momentarily like that and just take nice even wraps I want a really really flat uniform thread base here real simple wham just like that okay just like that good Awesome, great. So now I want to take what we call some hot yellow ultra wire here. And I want to take some black. Both of these are in the small size. So I'm going to get some of those about the same length. And that way it's going to make it a little bit easier to tie that in. So I'm going to get here with my little bit of clippers, get that cut. And I'm going to come in here with the yellow oh wow I've used more of this yellow than I thought I have I see the the spool all right rocking trucking do, 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 do. all right yeah I was just kind of waiting you know to go on I had uh, Alexa playing some music while the family was out doing some shopping and apparently um, Facebook kind of picked that up and it was a copyright uh, thing I had no clue that would happen I told Alexa off and it actually went off um, there when people started coming on but 
they blocked it in the uh, um, the United States, Guam. If people are were listening in Guam, Puerto Rico. They blocked it in Puerto Rico. So anyway, so I apologize for that. I certainly do apologize. Did not want to mislead anybody on that. I certainly feel bad that that happened. I would have never even dreamt that. You know, you're hanging around, you know, drinking your favorite beverage, listening to a little bit of music, you know, waiting for people to come on. I mean, it's just, you just forget about it. You're just listening to music and then whammo. Now, as you can see, I'm taking my time. I want a really, really flat base here, and I'm actually going to let that thread unwind again so it flattens out. And you notice it's kind of going counterclockwise right there. Now, typically on my Norvice, I would do a lot of really, really quick spinning here, but this one, I just want to take my time with it, and I'm kind of doing it more traditional, but you will see here in a moment, I am going to use the rotary feature of the Norvice with the straight jaws, the standard straight jaws with this. So I'm going to start coming up here, just make these nice flat wraps, okay? This is important if you're doing a quill body fly. So for instance, you take some peacock hurl and you take an eraser and you strip those off if you wet those quills moisten them and then tie them in it makes them more supple they are brittle but you want a nice flat underbody so it looks really good all right i'm happy with that i'm going to put a half inch and i'm going to take my norvice bobbin set it over here in the bobbin holder now here's the trick to this thing this is where it gets really intense you want to get this started to where it's going side by side, alternating colors, all right? As you can tell on this one, it's gonna be a black and a hot yellow in through there. And Braden was sitting in here with me the other night as we were, um, as I was preparing this fly to get it submitted uh, so it could come out for judging as it did today. And the point that he made up, and it's a really good observation, <clears throat> excuse me, is that the, the colors on this here do a great job of really mimicking the uh, colors of a yellow jacket. And he was absolutely correct. Sorry about putting my fingers in the way. Um, as you can see, I'm just making sure those wraps stay side by side as best we can. Okay, just showing that skill set of wrapping wire and as you can see well it's cutting into my finger you have to be careful um, but as you can see what you can do with this stuff right here gives a great body and it's going to be very durable the other thing with it being wire it's actually going to go ahead and add some weight to the fly itself um, so adding you know additional weight to this particular pattern is not going to be as important as it would be maybe on another another pattern there per se so let me go ahead and get that secured there i'm going to grab some old these are actually some old fingernail nippers that my wife had they kind of uh broke the uh feature that you would use to spring them broke so i i took them and have uh, definitely adapted those for other other uses okay so we're looking pretty good right there and if you folks have any questions feel free to hit me up uh, Shannon at tuckflyshop.com. Be glad to get back to you as soon as I can on that there. And we've had some really great comments there. And I really enjoy seeing those things that you tell us. So the next step that we have to do on this particular pattern is if you noticed on the original one, we have this dubbing collar. Now this collar here is a combination of two different materials. One being natural, one being man-made. The natural part of it is the, um, as you can see, it's the ice dub in the golden brown. Uh, this one is packaged in a hairline, but there's other ones out there we have in the shop, whether it's Orvis hairline, things like that. And then the other part of this equation is going to be some uh, CDC black. And the key to CDC is, you know, getting those good feathers, which is, um, you know, tough to do. So you have to kind of go through your box and pull some of those out. Um, as you can see, some CDC. Great, great feather. Great uh, to use it for lots of different things. 
So I want to get a couple of those feathers. And what I've learned is I like using two of these on here. Here's another one real close to the same. I'm kind of pulling those down like so. And I stack those guys. See, just like that. And then I want to take my magic eraser that I have slots cut in. This was not my idea. I stole this from the guys uh, at Cheech uh, there, and it works out really well. I'm going to take the ice dub, golden brown. Gonna get some of that. Going to kind of try to get everything kind of lined up in here like that. I want to find me a area here to kind of put that in. Do that over to the side. Sorry, you can't see that. Put that in there. And then I want to take the two CDC feathers. Okay. I want to put them in the slot, which is going to put all that stuff together. Okay. Like that. And as you can see, I've kind of got a uh, sandwiched in there like so. Okay. Get that up close. I want to take some scissors. I want to trim the ends like that. See, I've trimmed the ends. And then I want to take my clamp. I want to come in here like so. Come in here and grab that stuff. And then I'm going to pull it out. As you can see, I've got a bundle of joy right there. And what I have to do next is I have to trim those stems off right there. So I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to reach in here. Trim that off like so. I don't quite have that stem. There we go. As you can see, I've got some feather and some iced up to go into a dubbing loop. So now let's make our dubbing loop. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fingers. I'm going to go over the top like so and give me a little bit more space. So the great thing about this automatic bobbin, I'm going to close up this loop. It's important to do wham like that. Nice and secure. I want to put a half hitch. Beautiful. I'll take this over to my bobbin holder and we have these Norvices for sale at the shop folks. Just give us a call. Give us a call. Dr. Slick dubbing loop spinner. I prefer this one. I just like it short and it's heavy. It just feels good in my hand. All right. So here's the tricky part. I'm going to take this here. I want to put it up in this loop. Get my finger here in here and kind of get it like so. Oops. I'm going to pull down like that. Super important. See, I've got those trapped. I want to start spinning. And there we go. See that lovely, lovely magic happening there? Looks pretty cool. Now you can take a brush like so, toothbrush, whatever you want, kind of rake that out, but that looks pretty dandy. Now, once again, I'm going to use the rotary feature here on my Norvice, put in this collar. And as you can see, that kind of combination with the ice as well as the natural feather just gives it a, what I'd call an awesome bad to the bone George Thorogood kind of moment here. Okay, I'm gonna pick my scissors up again if I can remember where I put them. Typically they live right here on my fingers, but since I was doing a dubbing loop, they don't at that point in time. You can kind of sweep those back. Be cautious not to get your fingers uh, hooked right here in, in that, because let me tell you something, these hooks are sharp and they will leave a mark. Okay, now Jack at the shop, would finish it like that right there. He, he told me that's how he would fish it. I get it. That's fine. Um, however, on a lot of my nymphs, you know that I do put some kind of rubber leg. I feel like I like the movement personally. I like fishing with the movement and I like um, just how it looks as well. And I guide with it. So here I've got some of these um, peach. Here we go. It's Montana fly, barred sexy floss and yellow medium. Looks like something you'd put on a hopper. I'm going to grab one of those here. Okay. And all I'm going to do on these and when I put a lot of my stuff on is I just double it over. Okay. Come in here like this. 
give my bobbin a counterclockwise spin just so the thread will not jump forward it jumps to the back a couple of wraps now what I'm going to do I heard Braden he's in the other room I want to pull those down to the side like that okay real simple cool as you can see now come in here put some more wraps on it really secure that down looks good I'm going to grab my Griffin with <laughs> Griffith whip finisher cool hey I wanted to give a shout out man we got a a lot of positive comments on the podcast. Dale the other day was floating down the river on a guy trip and somebody heard his voice and said, hey, I listened to you on the podcast. That's you guys. So that's awesome. The, that's that's sweet. That's pretty cool. So you noticed right there, I apologize. I come in here, boom, tripping that off in the front. I've got these super long legs. Typically when I put things in the bins, the legs are going to be a little longer, which gives you the ability to trim them up to the length that maybe you want them right there that one's thrown back a little bit not a big deal it'll still fish it doesn't bother me at all okay as you can see with that dubbing and stuff in there it looks pretty doggone cool i'm going to take a little bit of uv resin i'm going to put it right there in that slot like that i'm going to come in on the legs right there right there and i'm going to take my uv torch i'm going to hammer down 88 out the gate and since this is a nip we don't need the amadou patch jack that's kind of like the going thing at the shop in the podcast is how many times we can say amadou so here we go we got us our two wire nymph ready to fish and ready to do a great job and hopefully this will be something that you folks will like be sure to go to the norvice facebook page and click on the link there when you see a fly like this right here if you folks will give it a like that'll be great hopefully i can advance to the sweet 16. Um, if for some reason i do and i continue to advance the winner gets 500 dollars worth of norvice products and if i win it i don't need it to be honest with you what i would like to do would be able to donate to someone that maybe it's in the medical field or a veteran or something like that through this time of crisis that we're going through right now it's the one thing that's affecting everybody regardless of who you are where you are what you do or what you don't do this is something that's definitely is going to change the shape of our future and we are going to come out stronger on the other side guaranteed you that appreciate everybody who's called uh, me the last couple of days personally that's been a lot to me and my family and the folks that's come by the shop and, and, and uh, contacted the shop, I know that means a lot to the owners, Dale and Bobby, and, and certainly blessed to have those guys who really care about their employees. So if you have any questions, give a call, 1-828-488-3333. Shoot me an email, that's shannon at tuckflyshop.com. Uh, if you have any general questions, info at tuckflyshop.com and continue to listen to our podcast, The Tuck Cast with a Splash of Bourbon. Thank you, folks. Have a great day.